Good morning, Crosspoint Church. We're so glad that you're here. Won't you stand to your feet? Let's get ready to worship. We're going to sing a new song this morning. Let's put our hands together. Come on. Hey. We sing your word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Your way is the only way for me. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I want to be on it. It's a narrow road. Sees why, cause you're good on your promise. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, you'll complete it. I'll take I've seen it in my life It's a narrow road that leads to life But I want to be on it It's a narrow road and the tide is high But you're part of the waters I'll take you at your word If you say Your grace is 
church, let's continue to worship our Father this morning.
your glory, Jesus. First Chronicles chapter 16, it says this. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the people. So can we do that, church? Can we just worship him? Can we just sing to the Lord? Tell of his marvelous works. Can we lift our hands together all across this room? If you feel comfortable in this place, can we just surrender to Jesus right now? We're singing about him, we're singing about his name. The name that is above every name, the name that has power. Can we speak his name, speak Jesus over your situation, over everything that you're going through, whether good or bad? Whether in the sun or in the night, whether on the mountains or the valleys, can you speak Jesus over every situation right now? I don't know what you're going through, but I know Jesus does. So can we surrender to him? Give it all to you, Jesus, as we lift your name. We look to Yahweh. King of kings, the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power, your name is healing. 
darkness over every enemy. Jesus, for my family, why oh, speak the holy name? Jesus. Jesus. God, I ask that this morning as you see each person here in this room and those watching online, you know their situations, you know their needs, you know everything about them. And God, I pray that today in this atmosphere of faith, in the presence of your Holy Spirit, that people once again would lift up their needs before you. God, those who have asked you time and time again that today you would give them the courage to ask one more time, that a stronghold would be broken, that a body would be healed, that somebody would be delivered and set free, that relationships would be restored, Lord, that you would bring miraculous provision. God, in this moment, we ask that you would move. We speak the name of Jesus over every situation. And it's in his mighty name we pray, amen. And amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Before you're seated today, shake the hands of those around you. The love sores are gonna make their way up to the stage. The staff's gonna help. For those of you who don't know this family, Pastor Levinsky was playing the piano a minute ago in McKenzie. They are the worship pastors here and they have triplet boys and a newborn boy. And we're gonna do a baby dedication for four babies this morning. I love it. Here, let me, let me, let me, let me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Man, praise the Lord. I hadn't even started and y'all got me teared up this morning. Man, Psalm 127 says that children are a gift from the Lord. They're a reward from him. Two chapters later in Psalm 139, verse 16, the psalmist tells us, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. 
As parents, we have the joy and the privilege of teaching and training our children in the way they should go. And in two verses, in these two verses remind us that raising a child is a holy and important job. It's both a gift and a weighty responsibility. This is why Pastor Levinsky and McKenzie have brought Legend Davis, Leonardo Kenneth, Lazarus John, and Lennox Shane to be dedicated to the Lord this morning. We ask families if there's a specific scripture that they want us to read in moments like this. And Mackenzie and Levinsky sent me this verse in Mark chapter one, verse number 17 and 18. It says, and Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and they followed him. Mackenzie texted and said their, that their prayer is that their boys would grow to know Jesus and be ready to abandon everything to follow him and make disciples. Come on, somebody. Some of you wonder why we do baby dedications and what they are to begin with. And it comes from an example that we see in 1 Samuel chapter 1. There's a woman named Hannah who's unable to have a child and she prays and she says, God, if you'll give me a son, I'll give him back to you. The verse says, oh Lord of heaven's armies, if you'll look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I'll give him back to you and he will be yours his entire lifetime. The act of dedicating a child to God is a way for us to acknowledge who our children truly belong to, that we're only caretakers and guides on their journey through life. It's our job to train them in truth and to introduce them to a God who loves them. So Pastor Levinsky and Mackenzie, if you'll commit yourselves to raising legend and Leonardo and Lazarus and Lennox in a way that allows them the earliest opportunity to know and love Jesus, say, we will. will. Just as Pastor Levinsky and Mackenzie have been given it, what happened? I'll keep going. I'll hurry it. (laughs) Just as Pastor Levinsky and McKenzie have been given a gift and responsibility, so have we as a church. In fact, we've been given a lot of gifts and responsibilities. We have the incredible responsibility of shaping how the next generation views Jesus and the people who follow him. And so church, if you'll commit yourselves to providing a healthy expression of the kingdom of God for legend and Leonardo and Lazarus and Lennox to grow up in, if you'll agree to care for and support Pastor Levinsky and McKenzie as they raise these boys, please join me in saying, we will. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for this family and for these boys. God, we thank you for your hand that is upon them, for the purposes that you have for each of them. And Lord, we ask that these boys would come to know you at the earliest age possible and that they would serve you faithfully their entire lives. God, we ask that you would give them wisdom and understanding. And it's in the name of the Lord Jesus that I dedicate Legend and Leonardo and Lazarus and Lennox to God and to his holy service. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. Erica's coming with babies, first Bibles, flowers. What a gift. You can walk off. I'll hand them. Like, I'll just hold on to them for a minute. We're good. We're good, for real, I'll bring them down. (laughs) What a day, what a day indeed. Today is a historic day for our church. My friends, Pastor Matt and Julia Loomis are here today and they're gonna be preaching in a minute, sharing, and then he's gonna be preaching. And I'm telling you, you've not come here today to be spectators, you've come here today to be participants, to hear the word of God, to take notes, to engage. And I'm telling you, first service was powerful. We expect nothing less in second service. Would you join me in welcoming Pastor Matt as he's here? We love you guys. Seated directly behind him is PG and Darlene. Welcome back, PG. Yeah. To the glory of God. Yes, sir. We continue to pray for you. So grateful for God's healing work in your body. For those of you who don't know, a few weeks ago, he had open heart surgery. And so welcome back to service this morning. This is our time in our service where we get to continue to worship the Lord through our regular Sunday morning tithes and Kingdom Builders offerings. There are multiple ways that you can give today. At each exit is a lockbox that you can drop your check or cash into. You can give online at crosspointwaverly.com. You can mail or drop off your check or cash here at our office anytime Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 5.00. 
us pray this morning. God, we thank you for your goodness to us. God, and for this moment today to bring back to you what you've given to us. Lord, I pray as people bring their obedient giving, their tithe to you, that you would bless them. And as they give generously above and beyond that to kingdom builders, that you would multiply it for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Let's turn our attention to the screen for a few announcements. Good morning, Cross Point Church. We're so glad that you've come to worship with us today. Hey, if you're new here, we wanna say a special welcome to you and we'd like to get to know you. So in the seat back in front of you is a QR code. Scan that QR code and then fill out the digital connect card. And then after service, come to the Welcome Center. We'd like to get to know who you are, answer any questions that you may have about our church and give you a free gift. And for those of you who are watching online, welcome, we're so glad you're tuning in. If you are new online, once you go ahead and click on the link, which will bring you to the Digital Connect card, fill that out so then that way we get to know who you are as well. Again, we're so glad you're tuning in. Hey, we've got some exciting things coming up for you and we don't want you to miss those things. First up, we have VBS that's gonna be taking place June 13th through the 16th. Hey, get your kids signed up for that because we don't want you to miss this. It's always a fun time every year. We also have the School of Arts Showcase that's going to be taking place on May 11th at 1 p.m. in the auditorium. Hey, we want you all to come and support those that are going to be performing on that very special day. Hey, just want to let you know that next week is Pastor Jonathan and Erica's last Sunday. And if you feel it in your heart to give a love offering, you can do that via cash or a check or online. And if you do do that online, please put love on there. Also on the memo, love in the check and, and all of that. And so if you want some more information about that, please refer to your bulletins. We love Pastor Jonathan, we love Erica, and we want to send them out just right. We also have the special business meeting that's gonna be taking place today after second service. Hey, more info on that, please come out to that. We don't want you to miss out on any of, any of this stuff. And so we're so glad that you are here worshiping with us, and we hope that you have a blessed day. God bless you. Good morning. One of the things, uh, before we get started, some people were asking me and other board members, how do we pick or choose a pastor? Well, there's a lot of variables that go into that. Jonathan was really instrumental in helping us, spent hours on the phone contacting people, asking them to pray about it. It's just amazing what he did. It's, that's very unusual for any pastor that's leaving to do that. So I, I, I praise him and thank him for that. <laughs> then, in looking at that, there was a lot of characteristics that we found out also from a, two interviews that we had with Matt and Julia that were really important. First of all, uh, some of the references that we got were just high praise all the way around. You look at uh, some of the things that they said, a really high integrity level. His voice of vision, he leads with love. I mean, some of those things are just incredible. It's Bible-based preaching. Um, there's so many things that, that they said. They said, Julia is like a mom to everybody, and Matt's like an uncle or a dad to everybody. And it was just really neat to hear that. The personal relationships that they build are important, just like Jonathan and Erica have done the last 10 years. And that's really key when you think about it. Some of the things that we want as a pastor is, are those basic th things, that he's a man of God. One thing they said at the end, both of them, He'd be a great fit for Cross Point Church. After interviewing him, the staff got to meet him and spend time with him. 
and the reports from that, I know, I talked to PG afterwards when he was in the hospital even, and he said, if you don't hire them, I still want them to be my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was just a, a great fit for our church, and I'd like you to give them a, a warm cross point welcome. Thank you, Steve. Well, thank you. We are super excited to to be here. And I don't know about I don't know about Uncle. I don't I don't know how to be an uncle. I could maybe be like Uncle Crazy Uncle Carl in your family or something. I could I could fill that role for you. But um, I thought it'd be kind of you know good for us to just give you a little context of who we are and and talk about you know maybe the journey that that we've been on in ministry and. And so I'll start with this. Julie and I got uh, married right out of high school. We were high school sweethearts, and uh, we quickly told our kids as they were growing up, you're not going to do that. Uh, that's not the, the way to go. But um, man, right after, right after we, uh, I, I love you. Okay, I just want to make sure you felt that way. Um, but right after, our, right after we got married, we got plugged into our local church, and uh, I think the youth pastor kind of tricked us a little bit because what he did is he got us plugged in and then like in two months he left and we were doing kids ministry. We were the kids uh, ministry directors and then uh, we stepped into the role as kids pastors. And, you know, that's really where I learned that God had a specific calling that he puts on people for what he desires them to do. And, and thank goodness that that calling was short and he called us to youth ministry thereafter <laughs> Uh, but uh, we did, in, at Glad Tidings, we learned how to follow the call and be obedient to the call. And, and so we were at Glad Tidings as youth pastors, uh, kids pastor. We filled in also the role kind of a, as associate pastor, uh, kind of at the same time. And all together, like 12 years we were there. And man, just great memories there. Uh, that's where I met uh, Pastor Dan, Pat and Gil, and Lindsay. I mean, Lindsay is what was the awesome part of that. Dan and I are good friends. <laughs> We're good friends. Ask him about the cones. That's all you have to do is ask him about the cones, and he'll remember that. But um, from there, we really felt like the Lord was calling us into a role as missionaries in the state of Iowa to the local high schools and middle schools. And uh, it was called the Youth Alive Missionary. And really, our, our goal was that we would come alongside students to help them initiate, self-initiate, basically a youth group or a, a campus club on their campus and had a lot of opportunities to, to share and do assemblies at schools. And um, I kind of told on myself because uh, this morning driving in, I remembered a moment where uh, Pastor Jonathan and I were both at this particular school assembly and uh, I was supposed to invite the kids back to come back to the evening event. Like, that's the, main, that, that's the main point, right? We want these kids to come back and hear the gospel. And I forgot to do it. I was like, Jonathan, go up there and tell them to come back. And he's like, man, this ain't my thing. This is your, you go do it. <laughs> he just left me hanging there. But, uh, and from, from there, we, we stepped into the role as the, um, the network youth director for, for the state. And uh, man, we ha we enjoyed just four years of camps and conventions and fine arts and all of those things, traveling around and, and, and just meeting youth leaders across the state and pouring into them. And that was a, man, that was a great time for us as well. And then after that, we, we transitioned to a church in Clinton, Iowa, where I served as the executive pastor and, and really got to uh, watch and be part of a church that God was just, you know, just growing very rapidly. And, and so we, we got to, man, just God's been so good to us in, in allowing us to, to be in places where he's doing things. And most recently, uh, I have I've served as the Central Iowa director. What was my title? I don't even know. You guys are probably, so I know that there's a connection to YFC here and uh, I've been serving in a role as the Central Iowa director for Youth for Christ and um, and that's kind of been a, a I, don't, I don't know want to say anything uh, you know bad about that but it's been so unique for me because what it did is it opened my eyes to something that I didn't see before. 
And I kind of needed that moment to step outside and see what God was doing. And I'll share more about that in a little bit. But um, Julia probably wants to share more about our family, I'm guessing, right? So um, in May, Matt and I will celebrate 32 years of marriage. Yep. Yep, I knew that. Yeah. Did you know that? I did. Do you know the date? It was the day we got married. Oh, clever. <laughs> um, I, we have two daughters. I actually brought pictures if they have it. But um, our oldest, oh, that's our youngest daughter, Emily. And she is at Texas A&M finishing up law school. She's going to be a lawyer, which really just puts so many things, her teenage years, into perspective. I'm like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that is our daughter, Emily. Um, and our, that's our oldest daughter, Lisa, and her husband, Blake, and that's our granddaughter, Hazel. I'm so in love, so in love. Um, but they are both in education in the South St. Paul area, and that's our newest granddaughter. Her name is Mabel, and she is like 11 days old right now, so yeah, but it's just the best. Oh, I just love them so much. It's just the best. Anyway, um, I am a paraeducator at our local school, and um, so I work with special needs and at-risk students and just really, really enjoy that. Just That is definitely a call. And I'm just thankful to be here. I'm thankful for the opportunity to come and just share our hearts and let you get to know us a little bit better. Awesome. I think that's it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you can take that. You have to know, Julia, um, she would much rather be up here and sing you a song than stand and, and talk. So thank you, Julia, for doing that. I love you. Thanks for going on the journey of life with me. Um, so I, go ahead and, and grab your Bible. We're gonna, I'm going to read a, a quick scripture here in Ephesians chapter 2 in, in, in just a moment. But what I'd like to do is just kind of connect you to... Like, how did I get to right here, right now? And, and I, I want to share it because I want to make sure that God receives the glory for it. Because God did some cool things. And it really started for Julie and I at the beginning of January. And we had just bought a home and moved into a home. Uh, we'd, we'd bought it in December. So you know, we've been into a month. Our, our jobs were great. Loved our, our, our jobs. Everything was good. And our family had just been back for Christmas. I mean, our tanks were full. And uh, honestly, we, uh, we just felt really good until January 3rd. And all of a sudden, there, there was just this, something was happening inside of each of us. And we began to talk to each other about it. And I remember uh, as we were standing in our bed, we're trying to like put a word like, Put words to what we were feeling, and and we kind of just discovered that we were unsettled. Something wasn't settled. God had brought us to this point, but there was something yet that he wanted for us. And so we just, I mean, we knew enough that, hey, when, when we start to feel that way, let's, let's seek out the Lord. Let's pray. Let's find out what he's, he's doing. And, and so we did. We spent the next couple of weeks, we just prayed about, hey, my God, what are you doing in our hearts? And began to really feel a call to the lead pastor role. And, and I, I haven't ever felt that before. That's something that the Lord has always called very specifically to, to unique areas. And um, honestly, I just, I wasn't thinking about it. And the Lord just really kept saying that over and over to both Julie and I. And, and we were like, okay, Lord, well, we just uh, bought a house. Not sure if you knew that. And we don't, like, where, what's, that doesn't make sense. And so we, obviously, we pray about that, and we're feeling this tension. It's unsettled. And, and we finally did what we have instructed every uh, person that we've ever led before, is to just say, when God speaks, say yes. Don't worry about the rest. But when God speaks and, and tells you something, just say yes and operate in that. So we said, okay, Lord, uh, we say Yes. And, and it felt good to be able to say, okay, it's in the Lord's hands, whatever it looks like, you know, whether that's six months away or, or whatever. And literally, like less than a week later, I get a phone call from your pastor as he shares his heart about what God's doing in their life with transition. 
And I just, I just want to point this out because it's, there's such a truth here that when we say yes to God, it opens the door for him to immediately complete his will. And he's been planning a conversation and working on Jonathan's heart and preparing this church for change. And he needed to also do this in our life, and he did it. God's good, isn't he? God is so, so good when we say yes. And I just also, man, I want to just take a moment and, and, and say that in our conversations with Jonathan and Erica and, um, man, they have such love and respect and honor for you in this church. They just, they love you so much. And Jonathan and, and Eric, you guys have done a phenomenal job here as leaders. Thank you for being obedient to the Lord and what you've done here. We love you. Can we just express our thanks? To the Bartholos. You guys are awesome. Great friends. Well, listen, I, I'm glad to, to be here today because this is what I know, okay? The church is not a building. The church is not some weekend activity that we do together, all right? The church is us. It's you and me, right? And the body of Christ is made up of these many parts. Even crazy Uncle Carl has a place right inside the body. And I know that Cross Point Church will continue to see lives changed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen to that? That's so true. Now listen, I told you to go to Ephesians chapter 2, and I want you to look at Ephesians 2, 18. It says this, For through him we have both access in one spirit to the Father. What it's saying is, for through him we all have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you're fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together in a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that God, you use each of us uniquely. And God, today I believe that your spirit will speak uniquely to each and every heart in this place. God, would you open our hearts to receive? Would you open our minds to be able to comprehend? God, would you change the direction of our feet? Because we've heard your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Jonathan preached a great message, and I love the part in it where he talked about that there's a lead line in music, and if you don't have the lead line and you put things on top of it that don't fit, and if the lead line's not right, it, it messes everything up, and he, he talked about how Jesus is our lead line, and we can add our harmonies on top of it, but if you take Jesus out, it doesn't work. Man, what a great truth. And I really got excited about the key change moment. Man, how do you know that there are exciting times that are coming? And it's not, listen, it's not a manufactured moment. It's not something that one person is going to create. It's not whipped up. It is a building upon what's been consistent and constant all this time. It's the greatest of great cornerstones, Jesus Christ. That's what we're building on. Not only is the church being built up on that, but you and I are being built together in the process as well. And I'm excited about that, being built up in him, because all of our hope, all of our confidence is in Jesus. It's not in buildings. It's not in programs or slick marketing or those things. We boast in Jesus, right? We boast in Christ. How many of you know there's power in the name of Jesus? Amen? 1 Corinthians 3.11 says this. For no one 
can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Man, and I'm so thankful that our chief builder uses you and me. He chooses to, to use us. And, and some of you, he's, he's given you these unique abilities, specific things that he has gifted you in, and you operate in it, and it makes all of us better. I love that. But Scripture also talks about the reality that there are things that he says to all of us that pertain to all of us. And sometimes we don't get some of those things quite at the top of our priority list. And we're going to talk about one of those things today, okay? We're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, but I want you to look at verse 20. This is what it says. It says, we are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador. That's a pretty cool word. It sounds like, that sounds pretty dignified, doesn't it? Wouldn't you like to you know, be called ambassador to this or that or, or whatever? We're, we're ambassadors. But, you know, Paul is talking about our purpose here, and he has a lot to say about it. And we're going to spend the rest of our time today looking at this passage. So what, what is an ambassador? It's important for us to know what it is, right? Well, a great definition would be a person who promotes or acts as a representative of someone else, someone that's sent out on a mission to build relationships. Now, in the world, we have political ambassadors, we have relational, we have economic ambassadors, there are ambassadors to cities. You know, you guys probably don't know this. In fact, I can't believe Steve did not tell you this, but I was an ambassador. Pretty big deal. <laughs> to the city of Des Moines, Park and Recreation Department. <laughs> but as a 19-year-old, I thought it was kind of cool. They gave, us, uh, they gave us these blue polo shirts to wear as we went through the parks, a little emblem for the city, and on the back it said ambassador in big, bold letters. They, they could have just wrote NARC on the back, because that's pretty much what we did. But they said we were representatives of theirs in the parks to, to talk to park users and answer their questions and, and help them. But, uh, you know, the Bible says that we are spiritual ambassadors, that we are Christ's ambassadors, that we represent Jesus. We promote Jesus to those around us. If you're a Christian, the Bible says you are an ambassador for Christ in this world. 2 Timothy 1.9 says that God saved us and called us to a, a holy calling. Not because of our works or anything, what we have done, but because of his power and his purpose. Now notice it says that he's called us. He's called. So what's in this calling that he's called us to? Let me give you uh, just a few overview shots here. Romans 1.7 says basically we're called to be his people. In John 15 it says that we're called to be God's friends. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 it talks about how we're called to be holy. And then we're called to be part of a fellowship. In 2 Corinthians 5 what we're talking about today. We're going to see that we're called to speak on Christ's behalf. In Romans 8.29, it reminds us that we're called to become like Jesus for God's purpose. In 1 Timothy 1, it says and talks about that we're called to an eternal life. 2 Thessalonians reminds us that we're called to share in his glory. That's your calling. It's not your career, though. Don't get that confused, okay? Okay. See, if you're a follower of Christ, then you're a representative of Jesus. You're an ambassador, and that affects the way you live. It should affect the way you live. Look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. It says, be sure that you live in a way that brings honor to the good news of Christ. Man, see, an ambassador remembers who they represent. And we represent Christ. When you're getting ready for work in the morning, 
Remember who you represent as your four-year-old spills the cereal all over your pants. Right? When, uh, when you are uh, at work, remember who it is that you represent when your boss gives you negative feedback. When you are out playing a, a pickup game of basketball in the park, remember who you represent. It's just a game. Golfers talking to you. Remember who you represent as you're out there, even in those moments. How many of you have been to a Casey's and you've stood in line for like 30 minutes because there's only one cashier and you really just want one pop? Even when you're frustrated in those moments, remember that you are a representative of Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.1, I love the way it words it, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received. See, we all have received the same calling. Now, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I uh, personally have been called to be an ambassador for Christ, to represent Jesus in this world. And so have you. It's for every believer. And you might be like, well, you know, I'm not. I'm not a pastor. I'm just a regular Christian. No, listen. If you're a Christian, there's no such thing as a regular Christian, okay? I want you to hear this. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. There's nothing regular about that. You have access to the very throne room of the creator of the universe, the king of all kings. Man, there's nothing regular about that. You have the authority to use the most powerful name. The name in which demons have to flee and it's been given to you to use. There's nothing regular about you, okay? Let's dive into our text. You're probably like, oh, we're just now starting. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 5. Look at verse 17 with me. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us, gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Well, what is this ministry of reconciliation he's given us? Well, let's keep going. It says, this is what it is, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them and he is committed to us this message of reconciliation we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us God literally has handed to you the message of hope for the whole world and he said, listen, you now go and share this. You go tell people how they can be reconciled to me. And I love the fact that God makes all things new. When we, when we accept him into our life, we become a new creation. And a new creation gets a new purpose. But how many of you know that sometimes we kind of forget what his purpose is. Over time, we begin to replace his purpose with our purposes. It just naturally, unfortunately happens. But we need to pay attention. And that's what Paul wants us to see here. Look at verse 19. This is crazy when you really think about it. God gave us the message of reconciliation. And if you're here as a believer, you're in the us. He has committed that message to you. The greatest story, the greatest message ever told, he's giving it to you. It's your responsibility. Listen, we all need to be reconciled to God. I love the fact that he loved us so much that he created a way for us to have right relationship with him. Listen, we know that sin is a problem and it separates us from our king, from our maker. Romans 3.23 reminds us that all of sin, nobody's above this, we've all fallen short. Romans 6.23 reminds us that the wages of that sin, the penalty is death. 
but the gift of God is eternal life. Now, the gift of God is that we have been reconciled to him, okay? And if you haven't done that, I just want to pause for a moment. If you're not in right relationship with God, you're going to have an opportunity here in just a few minutes where, where you can make that decision and you can accept this gift that we're talking about here. Verse 20 says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. That's who we are, as though God were making that appeal through us. I want you just to think about that for a minute. He's using you. He's using your words, your mouth, where you find yourself. He's using that for his message. You know, the, the simplest definition of an ambassador is this. It's the highest ranking diplomat sent as a representative from one country to another. So you're not from this, you're not from this world. This isn't your kingdom. You have a home in heaven, right? It's kind of like when I was an ambassador for the, the parks department. Um, I wasn't there on, on a picnic. I didn't show up and slide down the slides. I did do that after they closed and it was dark when nobody could see me. I did enjoy that. But listen, I was there for one reason. I was there to represent as a highest ranking official the city. That's why I was there. And understand this, you are sent by God to right now, right here, this moment, this city, because this world's not your home. The Bible says that you're an alien here. In fact, the, the Bible says that you were sent to represent a king from a better kingdom. So to help you out this week, I'm going to give you two thoughts. I'm going to give you two things that I want you to write down. And this next week, if you will just run these two thoughts through your mind, it will help you to live as Christ's ambassador this coming week. Okay, Number one, write this down. As Christ's ambassador, you weren't picked by people. You were chosen by God. You weren't picked by people. You were chosen by God. John 15 verse 16 says this. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And in verse 19, he continues and he says, If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Friend, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Jesus chose you. Each and every one of you. You don't have to believe the lies of, of the world or anyone else in your life. You have been hand chosen by him. You weren't picked by people. You were chosen by God. And, and he chose you to be a representative with the people that you work with. The family that you get to spend so much time with. The people on your sports team. Even that lady at Casey's, who's been working so hard on that line. You get to be a representative of Christ to her, okay? You weren't picked by people. You were chosen by God. Number two, number two, write this down. As Christ's ambassador, guys, this is gonna blow your mind. This is good. It ain't about you. As Christ's ambassador, it's not about you. And if you can understand that, it changes how you frame each and every morning. How many times do we wake up in the morning and our thoughts are, what am I going to do today? What do I want to get done today? What do I want to eat? What do, it's all about me. But when we wake up and we say it's all about him, it changes how we interact with the world around us. It's not about you. When I was an ambassador for the parks department, I wasn't there just representing my own rules. Like, it, I couldn't say, like, okay, today no kids under eight get to come into the park. That would have made my job way easier. It would have been a lot better. But it wasn't about what I wanted. I was there to repeat, to share the message of those that sent me. See, you represent the kingdom of God. You represent the king of kings, so it's not about you. 
And I think about Jesus as our perfect example in all things. And he's a perfect example of the perfect ambassador. In fact, this is what Jesus said in John 6, 38. He said, for I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. See, he understood what it was to be a representative of the one who sent him. And friends, we're being sent, and we're here to represent him. And if we're here to represent Christ, then guess what? It matters how you spend your money. If we're here to represent Christ, it matters how you spend your time. Friends, it matters what you look at. Hear me. It matters what you look at. It matters what you allow to get inside of you. If we're going to be representing Christ, then it matters how you treat people. It matters how you talk to people on social media, your Twitter, your Instagram, your TikTok. For those of you over 40, that's Facebook. God's authorized you to speak on his behalf to share the hope of the world to share the story of the salvation from sin and some of you I know you're thinking I don't know I mean I don't know how I could do that I, I don't know how I could speak on behalf of God I don't know hear me Christian and the Bible tells us that the Spirit Himself will give us the words to speak. He's not leaving you out there all alone. No. The second thing, you can speak in the authority that He's given you. He's given you the authority to do this. I love how Paul put this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8. Paul said, I may seem to be boasting too much about the authority given to us by the Lord. But our authority builds you up. It doesn't tear you down. So I'm not going to be ashamed of using my authority. See, and that's what we need to do. It's not that hard. If you're not sure what to say to the clerk at Casey's when you're so frustrated you've been there for half an hour, build her up. Say, I know this is what the Lord would say to you. I see you. You're having a terrible day. I'm sorry that this is the way it is for you. But I hope your day gets better. Friends, it's that easy. It's that easy. Don't be ashamed of using the authority that's been given you. You know, um, as a police officer, there's lots of times that I would encounter people and I would... I would have to do hard things, and it was because of not my own authority. It was because I was aware that the city and the state had given me the authority to take away someone's rights temporarily and take them somewhere they didn't want to go. Operating under the authority that you're given is something that you should just walk in it's been given to you doesn't mean you're going to be heavy handed doesn't mean you're going to call them names doesn't mean you're going to be a jerk or any of those things and I never was I didn't step outside of the authority and the same is true as believers as Christians you've been given authority so speak in that authority operate in that authority but don't step outside it and be a jerk okay don't be a jerk for the kingdom it doesn't work be an ambassador. Represent Christ. We know there's authority in Jesus' name, and we have the ability to use that name. John 14, 13 reminds us, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Why does Jesus say that to us? Because we aren't regular Christians. 
Man, we are filled with his spirit. We are his ambassadors appointed by him to deliver this message of reconciliation to those around us. So this week, I want you to remember, I'm not picked by people. I'm chosen by God, and it's not about me. It's not about me. Paul says this in Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live but Christ that lives in me. I love that. I want to close, kind of wrap up our time with this. You need to understand, you are not just a stay-at-home mom. You are an ambassador of Christ, and you're raising up world changers, and you're shaping their minds to chase after Jesus. Listen, you are not just a student that walks through the halls of school waiting for the end of your school day. Listen, you've been called there. You've been placed there. Your feet wander places that he wants you to go to be a representative of him. And friend, you are not just punching the clock at work, okay? You've been called to be his ambassador there. You may not know exactly what that looks like or how to do all of that, but if you begin to step out and operate in it, all of a sudden, you'll have the words to say and you'll be thinking about people the way Jesus thinks about people because you're trying to represent him. Oh, friends, you have a purpose you have a purpose. You are the highest ranking diplomat sent by God to this place, this moment, this time, this city. You are an ambassador of Christ. That's who you are. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you that your word speaks so clearly to our hearts and it reminds us of some of the things we sometimes forget. God, we get busy. There are so many things in life that you have blessed us with. And God, I confess there's moments I get distracted. But God, today, would you refocus us? Would you remind us of what it is that you have called us to? To walk in this place our communities as an ambassador, thinking about what it is that you would say to people around us. As I look up across this crowd as y'all are praying, I just, I just wonder, man, if some of us just stepped out and said, yes, I'm going to be that which he has called me to be this week. I'm going to do that. I wonder how many people would find themselves so quickly that God puts things in front of us because we simply said yes. And I believe that some of you will be those that are the representatives of Christ to some of the highest positions, maybe in work, maybe in a workplace, maybe in in city government where all of a sudden you are the one that God's using as a mouthpiece to simply show the world who Christ is. I believe that about you. I do. And the reason I believe that about you is because God has already said that about you. God, help us walk in what you have called us to be. Help us to walk in who we are. I pray that our lives would be different because we have met with you today. I pray that, God, our schools, our homes, our workplaces would look different. All because we've been with you. Oh, we love you, Jesus. As you continue to pray, just seek the Lord and listen to his voice. I'd like to circle back to something I said to those of you in this place. Maybe you've never accepted Christ into your heart before. Maybe you'd say, listen, I'm the farthest that anybody in this place could be from Christ. But for some reason, man, he feels like he's calling. He's talking to me. Pastor, it seems like today's the day. Well, hey, I, I just want you to know that God loved you so much that he chose 
you. He chose you. And he prepared specifically for each one of us a way that we might return to right relationship with him. Loved us so much that he sent Jesus to live a sinless life on this earth. But yet, because it was a sinless life, Jesus paid the penalty for yours and my sin. He was crucified upon a cross. He died and was laid in a grave. And the punishment for your sin and mine was completed. But the story doesn't end there because Jesus rose from the grave. He rose from the grave to prove that he had the power to forgive your sin and to prove that you can walk in right relationship from this point forward. Man, the Bible says all you have to do is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is my Lord. It says you'll be saved. And friends, I'm going to lead you in a prayer in just a moment where we're just going to pray and we're going to tell that to God if that's you. But if you're here, would you, if that's you, would you just slip your hand up? I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to call you to do anything. I just want to see you so I know who I'm praying with. If that's you, would you raise your hand? You're ready to accept Christ or maybe rededicate your life. Yeah, I see you. It's awesome. I'll wait just a little bit longer. Is there anybody else? Church, can we pray together? I don't want any brand new Christian to feel like they're alone. And so let's, let's pray this prayer together. Would you repeat after me? Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying for me. I believe in you. And I give the rest of my life to you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to invite our prayer team to go ahead and come forward. And Man, if you have need, I just would encourage you to allow some of these to just pray over you, pray for you. And if you uh, accepted Christ in your heart today, maybe you didn't lift your hand, but you prayed that prayer and you meant it, you tell somebody about that today, okay? Maybe it's the person sitting next to you. Come down front, maybe tell one of these, and, and, and they would love to pray over you. But man, would you stand with me as we just continue to worship the Lord as the worship team leads us? Bring 
shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. The earth will shout your praise. Isn't God good? Any amens in the room? Isn't God good? God, he's so good. Well, let's, uh, let's close in prayer, and then I got a couple announcements for everybody. Lord, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you so much that you did send your son Jesus to the cross for each and every one of us, and that means you. Lord, I just pray that for things that need reconciliation, Lord, that you would pave a way, that you'd open up hearts to make that happen. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. And I just ask personally for forgiveness of the sins that I've committed. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just continue to convict me in the areas of my life that aren't pleasing to you. I pray that you'd put godly people, keep godly people in my life that would call me out, call me into greater things that please you. And Lord, I pray that same thing, that same blessing upon each and every one of us. You are so good, God. And I'll praise you each and every day. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to have a special business meeting immediately following service. So you're welcome to stick around. If you're a member, we're going to have the temp- official member. We're going to have the table set up in the back here in a minute. Please go check in, sign in, get your special ballot. And if you're not an official member, we want you to be. So seek out some of the staff, seek out some of the elders. We can walk you through what that looks like so that your voice can be heard going forward. I will look forward to seeing the rest of you next week, 8.30 or 10.15. God bless.